142. Ion concentrations greater than 5.4 times sent to the negative 6 molarity in water used for laundry purposes can cause staining. Oh no. What concentration of hydroxide ion, so OH minus, is required to reduce the iron concentration, the Fe2 plus, to this level by precipitation of FeOH2? Okie dokie. So we're talking about precipitation. They gave us a compound, right? And they gave us ion con iron concentrations, right? 5.4 times 10 to the negative 6 molarity. So it seems like we have a solubility product on our hands, right? This compound, the iron hydroxide, is going to, you know, uh, break down into the two ions when we write our solubility product equation. Now, remember, with any, uh, you know, precipitation or dissolution, we have to find the KSP values. So I went to the back of the textbook to find out what the KSP is for FeOH2, which is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 15th. So, Let's write out that balanced equation. So we have the iron 2 hydroxide, so, oops, Fe, OH2, and that's a solid. With the balanced equation, it's always going to dissociate into its two ions, and they gave it to me. So I don't even have to, you know, think of the charges. So it'd be Fe2 plus, plus OH minus. I have charges, so that means that they're definitely aqueous. So AQ, AQ all around. Okie dokie. And now let's just make sure that this equation is balanced. I do see that I have two hydroxides here, so I have to put a 2 in front of the OH. And now this equation is balanced. Now, did they tell me that we're starting off with any concentrations for, you know, iron or the hydroxide? Well, they said that we wanted to reduce the iron to plus concentration to this level. Well, what level? Oh, it's this level, 5.4 times 10 to the negative 6 molarity. So that is the concentration of the iron 2 plus, right? So 5.4 times 10 to the negative 6 molarity. And then for the hydroxide, it says what concentration of the OH minus. So I'm looking for the OH. So I don't know what that is. I'm going to label it as X. Now there's two ways that you can do this problem. Um, one way I'm going to talk about, and then the other way I'm actually going to do it. Now we can keep with our stoichiometry here, right? I do see that I have two OHs. So, I mean, throughout this whole chapter, we have been putting down for two X mainly when we have to use x's for both values. But if we put in the 2x here and I do my math, right? Remember, algebra, we're always solving for x equals, not 2x equals. So if we get an x value, I still have to go back and times it by 2. And if you're pressed for time on a test or a quiz, um, you might not have the time to go back and times it by two, or you might mistakenly, you know, accidentally forgot to times it by two. You would get a couple points off. The other way is to just say, okay, this is the only variable that I'm looking for. I'm just going to label this as X. Do the math. You get X equals. They match. So in this case, you don't have to go back. You found out what that hydroxide concentration is. So I'm going to do it this way, just leaving it as X. But if you want, try the 2X method, go back, times it by two. You'll see that we get the same answer. Okay. So now let's write out our formula for the KSP, right? Remember, the general formula is this right here, right? KSP just always equals to the concentration of the products raised to the coefficients. So let's write our formula, right? So we would have KSP equals the concentration of the Fe2 plus times by the OH minus, and then just make sure, do you have any coefficients? Well, yeah, the two. This time we do have to take that hydroxide concentration and raise it to the second, right? There's a one in front of the iron, but you could raise this to the first, but it's the same thing as just not having it. So now the iron is 5.4, times 10 to the negative six, the hydroxide is what we're searching for. I'm gonna label that as X. And the KSP value is what we had to look in the back of the textbook, 1.8 times 10 to the negative 15th. 
Okay, let's plug away. <laughs> 1.8 times 10 to the negative 15th equals 5.4 times 10 to the negative 6. And then we have, maybe I'll put it in this color, we have x squared. So this, I could now just, you know, get rid of the parentheses I just wanted to show you. And this would all be together. Let's divide by the 5.4 on both sides. 5.4 times 10 to the negative 6. 5.4 times 10 to the negative 6. This cancels out beautifully. And calculate time. 1.8 times 10 to the negative 15 divided by 5.4 times 10 to the negative 6. And yeah, I get 3.33 repeatingly, 3333. Three, three. So maybe I'll extend it out times 10 to the negative 10th. And this equals x squared. Now we just have to do the square root, do the square root on both sides. That gets rid of the squaring. And now we have an x equals. So 3 point, oops, square root of 3 point. 3, 3, 3, 3, times 10 to the negative 10th. And we'll do 1.8. 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5th. And remember, that's molarity. So go back to what we were searching for. We wanted to find out what that OH minus concentration is. And since we just labeled it as X, that's the answer. So the hydroxide concentration has to be 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5th. Molarity. And there you go. Okie dokie. What'd you think? Not too bad. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in and tell your friends, tell your classmates about this cool YouTube channel. Love to help them out as well. Got physics and math videos on the channel, so check it out. Okay. Bye bye.